Andrea. And I'm Ezra. We're part of the Grossman Lab at the University of Minnesota, and we've been studying warm season cover crops. can be planted during early or late season windows in the summer on vegetable farms. One option is to plant in the early spring, followed by a later season, later summer vegetable crop. A second option is to plant the cover crop at midsummer, following the harvest of an early spring vegetable crop. Summer cover cropping offers the opportunity to add nitrogen fixation and biomass incorporation to the vegetable rotation, and also to increase the diversity of plants on the farm landscape, particularly the diversity of flowering plants, which can attract pollinators and other beneficial insects. The cover crops that we're standing in today were planted in late June after we harvested lettuce from this field. On the other side of the alley, we planted the same cover crops in April and then terminated them in early July and now you can see that broccoli was transplanted there afterwards. So there are two primary management considerations for summer cover crops that are a little distinct from overwintering cover crops. Uh, the first is that weed management can be a challenge because the planting is occurring during times of heavy weed emergence. Seedbed preparation is key to giving the best chance to overcome weeds. Making sure that the weeds have been cleared by tilling or hoeing immediately before planting, and then making sure there's adequate water for the cover crops during establishment, that will give the cover crops the best chance of outcompeting the weeds. In our experience with smaller cover crops like clover or phasalia, um, if the cover emerges poorly and the weed canopy gets above it, then you probably won't get significant cover crop growth and you might want to retill the area and start over. But for larger fast growing crops, particularly buckwheat and our cowpea and sorghum sedan mix, um, we saw that those can sometimes outgrow and overcome early weed competition. And for most growers, it won't be feasible to weed a cover crop stand. But if you're working with a small area and you do have the capacity for hand weeding, we've observed that one hand weeding pass early in the cover crop growth can sometimes salvage a weedy start by giving the covers a second chance to get above the weed canopy with their own canopy. So we did that in these trial plots. You can see in the Phasalia plot here um, that it, it's still a little weedy, but it's done a pretty good job of overcoming the uh, weed canopy and filling in our Odin stand. But we found that um, in the clover plots, for example, uh, that didn't work so well and the clovers still were overshadowed by weeds even after that early weeding pass. The second consideration is the timing and method of cover crop termination so that spring cover crop residue won't interfere too much with midsummer vegetable transplants. The cover crops take up nitrogen during their growth, which protects that nitrogen from loss, but it takes time for that nitrogen to be released again and available for the cash crop to use. Too much coarse residue, like we might see with the sorghum sudan grass, will make it difficult for transplants to achieve good root soil contact and establish. So you should wait two to three weeks to transplant into the field to allow the residue to decompose a bit. And if you have a lot of cover crop biomass, you may want to wait even longer. Irrigation or a heavy rain will help speed up this process. We also mow and chop the biomass before we incorporate it to facilitate decomposition. In our research on warm season cover crops, uh, we have been looking at several species and mixes that we think are promising for Minnesota. One is a pea and oat mix. Um, so peas, uh, the advantage to peas is that they're a nitrogen fixing legume, while oat helps to fill in the stand and the canopy cover and add biomass. This mix establishes well in early spring when the soil is cool. Um, one challenge that we've found with it is that peas need really strong soil to seed contact. 
um, and they actually establish best when they're seated at a two to three inch depth. We have seen them successfully established by broadcast seating, but a lot of moisture is necessary, and the stands might still be a little more sparse than what you'll get if you can drill them. Kalpi sorghum sudan grass is another legume grass mix that we're trying. These are heat-loving species that can produce rapid growth in warm weather. When planted in cold soil, seedlings in our trials were slow growing and stressed until the soil temperatures were warm, and then they took off really quickly. This mixture grew up to six feet tall and produced up to 5,600 pounds per acre of cover crop biomass. And that will eventually contribute to your soil organic matter pool. Because the sorghum plants are so large, it will add a lot of organic material to soil when it's incorporated. But the stalks are stiff and thus should be chopped or mowed to encourage faster decomposition. Keep an eye out for nitrogen immobilization when adding this much carbon to your soil. Crimson clover is another nitrogen-fixing legume that, where well-established, can form a thick canopy of tender, nitrogen-rich biomass. The seeds and the seedlings of crimson clover are very small, so when it's establishing, it's vulnerable to weed competition and also to intense heat. Buckwheat is a fast-growing, non-legume forb. It's a good choice if you only have a short period for cover crop growth. It flowers in about 40 days, and it's very attractive to pollinators, particularly honeybees. Terminate buckwheat before seed maturity, or it will reseed. Phosalia is a non-legume forb that's native to the U.S. Southwest, and it's not a well-known cover crop in the U.S., but it's a popular cover crop in Europe. And in our trials, Phosalia attracted the greatest abundance and diversity of beneficial insects, including pollinators and pest predators. We were also impressed by its ability to fill in a thick weed-excluding canopy, but it didn't always happen. We had trouble establishing it in very hot weather, even with generous irrigation. Our spring-planted Phosalia produced up to 3,700 pounds per acre of biomass, generally similar to or more than uh, the buckwheat in the same time slot. However, it was generally less productive in our midsummer plantings. Sunflowers are highly attractive to pollinators when they flower and just fun to have on the farm. However, because each plant is so large and their early gro growth is slow, they take a long time to fill in a canopy by themselves. So we found it helpful to seed them in mixture with oat to add some biomass and suppress weeds. One thing we noticed was that sunflower seedlings were very tasty to birds and other herbivores. So in some cases, many of those that emerged were eaten. And this was also a problem with pea and cow pea. Cover crops may not produce immediate boosts in vegetable crop yields. And actually, they can lower yields in the short term if the cover crops have depleted soil moisture reserves or if nitrogen or other nutrients are still tied up in the cover crop biomass or are immobilized during residue decomposition. The cover crop biomass will release that nitrogen, but sometimes it can take longer during the season or even happen in a subsequent year. So growers should think of cover crops as a long-term investment in soil health and fertility.